Well, you know, I like to start off with something funny. A $1 bill met a $20 bill and said, Hey, where you been? I haven't seen you around here much. The 20 answered, Well, I've been hanging out at the casinos, went to a cruise, did the rounds at the ship, back to the United States for a while, went to a couple of basketball games, to the mall, you know, that kind of stuff. So how about you? Where have you, what you been doing? The one dollar bill says, you know, the same stuff. Church, church, church. That joke doesn't fit what I just preached, didn't it? Because you guys are generous. You're using the 20s, the 50s, and the 100s. Amen. How many of y'all brought your Bibles? Lift them up real high. Make Jesus glad and the devil mad. Say this. Say, this is my Bible. It is the Word of God. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. And I have what it says I have. I boldly declare that my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. And my cell phone is off. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name. Turn to someone, look it straight in the eye and say, Did you hear that, child of God? I will never, ever, ever be the same again. Well, God bless you. You all may be seated. Open up your Bibles to Acts chapter 10. And you know, while I was sitting here, I was counting. I just found we, we only have three empty family units on the bottom floor. That's it. All of you have taken them. All, most of them are up, up there now. So praise God. That was a better crowd than I thought. All right, Acts chapter 10. Before we read Acts chapter 10, I want to read Isaiah 61, verse 1 in the New King James Version. Look up at the screen for the verse. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal. Can you all say heal? Heal, heal the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prisons to those who are bound. Notice the Spirit anointed Jesus to heal, to heal people. And then Peter mentions this in Acts chapter 10, verse 38. He says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. Sickness is the number one yoke that the anointing destroys. That's how God heals the sick today. He does it through the anointing. And just as Jesus was anointed, we are now the body of Christ. We are the mystical body of Christ. And as a result, guess, guess where the anointing's at? It's on us. In fact, didn't our deacon read the passage Jesus read the passage um, about the deposit of the Holy Spirit. How many of y'all know you have a deposit from the Holy Spirit in your life? So because the Holy Spirit has come into your life, guess what happens? The same anointing that came upon Jesus Christ has come upon you. You are anointed. Can you all say out loud, I'm anointed? You're anointed with what? The Holy Spirit, yeah, that's the key. You're anointed with the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is the third person, the Godhead, who comes to anoint us. So once we get born again, Jesus comes into our heart, and then he makes us a candidate and worthy enough, with our sins being forgiven, that the Holy Spirit can come and dwell in our vessel because we have now been made holy through the blood of Christ. So the Holy Spirit comes, and he's the one who anoints us. Today, though, I want to talk to you about the healing anointing. This is an area that so few Christians know about. You can go to churches after churches and you might never ever heal here that there is a such thing called the healing anointing. But we've shown you how Jesus was anointed to heal and we're anointed to heal. Uh, in um, the disciples, they carried the healing anointing usually through oil when they were on, on the earth with Jesus. Mark 6, 30, 13 says, they drove out many demons and, what did they do? Anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. So, do you see the anointing is connected with healing? And then many of you know the passage in James chapter 5, verse 14. Is any one of you sick? Let them call for what? The elders of the church and let them what? Anoint him with oil. Can you all say anoint him? 
So what happens to the sick? They should be anointed with oil in the name of the Lord. And verse 15, and the prayer of faith, not the anointing. And we're going to see this in a moment. The prayer of faith connected with the anointing will heal the sick. So I want you to see there is a connection between the anointing of the Holy Spirit and divine healing. Now, the Holy, how, how would I define the healing anointing? It's real simple. The healing anointing, it is the power of the Holy Spirit on your body to enable you to heal the sick. Okay, there it is. The anointing, healing anointing is the power of the Holy Spirit. Where is the power of the Holy Spirit on? Your body. Can you all say my body? 1 Corinthians 6, 19 says, Do you not know that your body is the what? Temple of the Holy Spirit. What's, your, what's the temple? Now, now look at that. Your body. Not your spirit. Now, your spirit is the holy of holies. So, yes, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells in our spirit man, our spirit person, our deep, you know, our heart. But make no mistake about it, he's made your body his temple. Now, a few years ago when I was in Rome, going through the ruins, the old ruins of the old city, old buildings, God spoke to me and corrected me. And he told me not to say something anymore like I've been saying. And, and what I had done is I would just simply parrot, and, you know, mimic what I heard other people say. Kenneth Hagin, Copeland, Fred Price, Charles Scott. I always kept hearing the same thing, that when you got born again, it is your spirit that became new. Nothing happened to your body. That's what I always heard, is nothing happened to your body. Your body is the same. So I would tell people that. Is your body's the same? Your spirit man is what's new? And I would joke around, if you, were, if you had green eyes like me, you still had green eyes. And, and if you were five foot six, you still are five foot six. You know what I mean? Nothing happened to your body. What, what changed was your spirit. Well, what I did not really take in consideration was that God had changed our body and made it a temple. So the Lord told me, quit telling people, and this is what he said, quit telling people nothing happened to their bodies. Their bodies became the temple of the Holy Spirit. That hit me when I was in Rome looking at some of these old sites. And there I would see this, you know, they would have a, a description of this building. They said that it used to be a, a, a pagan temple to the goddess Diana or whatever the goddess was. And that these were pagan temples. And then they would tell you somewhere around the 4th century, Christians took it over and made it into a church. So you go down to Rome, go down to the Middle East, you'll see old buildings like that that used to be pagan temples, but then churches took it over and it became the temple for the people to worship God. And when I saw that, that's when God said, do you see this, Tom? Your body is still the same physical body, but it has now been renovated and a new resident resides in you. The Holy Spirit. Man, I tell you what, I had a Holy Ghost time right there in those ruins. Hallelujah! Woo -woo. Oh, man! The temple of the Holy Spirit. Oh, man, that, that, that hit me. And so God began to make me aware of how important our bodies are. So important that God is going to resurrect us from the body that was the temple. The, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, your body will be like a seed sown into the ground, and at the resurrection, it will come out a new body. But it's going to come from the same seed. Did you hear this? In other words, God is not going to create a new body by creating new dust from the earth or dust from heaven and just creating it and forgetting about this body and, and then he's just going to give us a new body that is not related to this earthly body. But rather, our new. in fact, that's why there's a resurrection. How many of y'all know for there to be a resurrection, there has to, the, the old body has to resurrect? So God began to show me how important our bodies were. 
And this is why the Holy Spirit has come into you to anoint you. And you are, I like what one person says, wall to wall, Holy Ghost. That my, my hands are the hands of the Holy Ghost. My feet are the feet of the Holy Ghost. My eyes are the eyes of the Holy Ghost. In other words, my body has now become God's temple. And it is anointed. Now you begin to understand why our bodies can be instruments to heal. Jesus said, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Why hands? Isn't hands my body? How could it heal? Because my body has now become the temple of the Holy Spirit. Say out loud, my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You ought, can I give you a challenge? For the next 28 days, try doing this. The moment you wake up, for the next 28 days, say, I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. Try that for 28 days. I am the, this month, I am the temple. Of, and then when you get up and you shave, I'm the temple of the Holy I'm going to do that with you for 28 days. I'm the temple of the Holy Spirit. You take a shower, I'm the temple of the Holy Spirit. When you look at yourself in the mirror, look at it and say, hello, temple of the Holy Spirit. Nice to see you. You're the temple of the Holy Spirit. Your body is the temple. I want you to see how holy your body is because God has chosen to pour his spirit on your flesh. Doesn't that what, isn't that what Joel says? God's going to pour out his spirit on all flesh. Flesh is carne. You are carne, not chili con carne. Your spirit carne. Spiritu carne. I made up a word. I don't know if that's a word. You are spirit flesh. You have the body, but it has now been anointed by God. A real anointing abides in you. I've seen it. I've seen people. They'll tell me, Bishop, the moment you walk right by me, man, I felt like I was going to fall. Bob, one of our ushers, he told me after the first service, he says, every time I come to catch people, the anointing hits me, and I'm just trying to, have to keep from falling. He says, I'm feeling the power of God flowing. I've seen it. That's what happened when I told you that story, a guy knocking on my, my car window. I rolled it down. He was so glad to see me for the first time. And as he's backing away, you could just see him. He's feeling the power. And I said, come here. And I mean, he started weeping. The power of God was all over. Some of you feel that power. When you get around a holy man of God, a holy woman of God, if you'll, you'll, you'll feel it sometimes. There's a presence around them. And it is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. But I want you to be aware of the anointing on your life too. I don't want you to think that Bishop Brown is the sole exclusive ownership of the Holy Spirit. No, you're anointed too. Now granted, we all have different anointings and my anointing is to teach and preach and to heal. But that healing anointing, I think, can be to a certain degree transferable to all of us. All of us can operate in it. So we we're talking about the healing anointing. Go over to Mark chapter 5, the gospel of Mark chapter 5. Let me, let me show you verse 24. Mark chapter 5, verse 24. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. Now watch this, verse 30. At once, Jesus Realizing that power had gone out from him, he turned around to the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you ask, Who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around as he had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet. 
trembling with fear, and told him the whole truth. She got healed. Notice the description. Power came out of him. That means he actually felt something. Power came out of you. I want, I want you to understand that the anointing on the body is a real anointing, and it flows out of us. John G. Lake said it this way. Electricity is God's power in the natural realm, but the anointing is God's power in the spiritual realm. That power flowing, that it's like electricity. A lot of, it starts to flow. And I want you to see that it flowed from Jesus to her and affected a cure of this, for this woman. She got healed. Now go over to Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. I want you to see another story. I want you to see how real this healing anointing is that is put on the body. And I, I keep emphasizing the body because many of us are not aware, really as we ought to, how real this anointing is. Look here in uh, Luke chapter 5, verse 17. One day Jesus was teaching the Pharisees, was teaching, and Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there. They had come from every village in Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was with, was with Jesus to heal the sick. Did you hear this? Hear the description. The power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick. And you know the story. Four men brought their friend to the roof of Peter's house. They broke up his roof and laid that man down on the mat. And Jesus said, your faith has made you, uh, your faith has, uh, your sins are forgiven. And then he says, so that, the, so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Stand up, take up your mat and go home. And right in full view, he got up and went home. But what does the Bible say? The power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal. There was a real tangible, there, people were feeling something, and yet Pharisees and Sadducees, they remained sick. They didn't get healed. One man got healed. Look at Luke chapter 6, 6 verse 19. And the people all tried to touch Jesus because power was coming from him and healing them all. You, you hear the description. They're trying to touch him. Why are they trying to touch his body? Because he's anointed. Do you see this? And power was coming from him. See, that's what happened with Peter. This is after the resurrection. Peter is walking through the streets, and the Bible says they would lay paralyzed and sickly people along the streets so that if Peter could walk by, just his shadow would heal him. And even if Peter got close, the shadow would cure the sick and people were leaping off of their mats. They were getting healed. Why? The anointing is on, was on Peter and the people were being healed. I want you to see this anointing is real. Now, unfortunately, most Christians know nothing about the laws that govern the healing anointing. So in case you're not familiar with certain laws that govern the healing anointing, let me give you four basic laws to understand this healing anointing. And I call them laws because Benjamin Franklin discovered electricity. He did not invent it. But electricity had been here long before Benjamin Franklin discovered it. And so what happened before him, no one had a light they could turn on, no light switches, no refrigeration. You understand? No, the electricity was here, but no one had tapped into it. But when Benjamin Franklin got it, he then began to work clearly on the light bulb and to figure out what can transmit this electricity which is God's power how can I get it to work in object to make it useful well the body of Christ has been so anointed but they're so ignorant when it comes to the laws that govern this anointing so what are the laws let me give you the first law of the anointing the presence of the anointing does not guarantee healing so that's the first thing. The anointing could be here right now, and I believe it is. But it doesn't guarantee you're going to get healed. See, it's possible to have the anointing, but you never touch it. Consider the woman with the issue of blood. She touched the hem of Jesus' garment. And Jesus said, who touched me? Everyone was touching him. Why were they all pressing against him? They all wanted to say they touched him. 
They're touching him because he's a famous preacher now. Some of them are desperate. They're touching him out of desperation. They know he can heal people. So they're touching him. They're, but they're not touching him with faith. But one woman touches him and power comes into her. The power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick, but only that man that was let through the roof got healed. We don't find any other example of anyone else getting healed. Again, it's like electricity. Unless you turn on the light switch, you're going to get nothing. So you've got to turn on the light switch. We'll, we'll talk about that second principle or that third principle next. Number, number two, the second principle is the anointing is tangible. It's tangible. Notice Jesus said, I, I felt power go out of me. I, he, he saw it. In other words, when you're anointed, you can sometimes feel it. Not all the time. You can't live under feeling that anointing. Your, your body won't handle that power any more than you can handle too much electricity going into you. But he felt something. And a lot of times I'll feel something. I'll feel it sometimes in my hands. For me, it's usually a tingling sensation, which is similar to when your hand falls asleep. But there's no reason for me to have the tingling because I'm not cutting blood circulation. But why am I feeling this? It's the anointing. I felt a little bit of that in the first service. I'm hoping I'll feel that again. But regardless of whether I feel it, I know I'm anointed. But you'll actually feel it. Some of you have felt it. How many of y'all uh, last week felt the anointing when I laid hands on you? You felt things happening. How many, well, a couple of weeks ago, we prayed for people to get baptized in the Spirit. How many of y'all got baptized in the Spirit that, that Sunday? Yeah, look at it. Yeah, people got baptized in the Spirit. This is what happens. It's a real tangible thing. You can sometimes feel it. But number three, the third law that governs the healing anointing is faith is the light switch that causes the electricity to flow. How do you get the anointing that's in one man, like myself, into you so that the healing anointing that's on me can affect a cure in your body? How can it work? you got to turn on the light switch. And that's what that woman did. She said, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. She didn't say, I hope I'll get well. This is my last chance. I'm going to touch him and see what happens. I hope something happens. I don't know if it's going to happen, but this is my last chance. I don't know what else to do. Some people, they let a minister pray for them out of desperation. They're desperate. They've been sick for so long. They want to get well, but they're not turning on the light switch of faith. I take it that your lights are off at home, no TV on, no lights on, but how many of y'all believe electricity is still in your house? But only when you turn it on do you have the power flow into the conduits that need to light up the house. So faith is the way to get the anointing to flow. That's why Jesus often said to the sick, your faith has made you whole. Jesus saw their faith, those four men. He saw their faith. See, they're turning on the light switch. The power was on Jesus, but oh, the Pharisees and Sadducees, they didn't turn on the light switch. They sat there looking with skepticism. I don't believe anything like this. I can't believe anyone finds this guy. What, what's so famous about him? I don't understand this. He hasn't even been through our schools. What makes him such a great preacher? And the power was there to heal him but only one turned on the light switch and the power flowed from Jesus to him. And even Jesus could do no mighty miracles in his hometown because of their unbelief. So even when he went to Nazareth, and I've been to that synagogue in Nazareth, and it's a tiny one, but very few got healed. It's because they were skeptical. They didn't turn on the light switch. They questioned, who does he think he is? What makes him think he's so special? He grew up with us. But the anointing was on him to heal the sick. And then finally, the fourth law is the anointing must be transmitted through containers. So that means there has to be a container of the anointing. You have to find that container, and the container will be the recipient of that anointing. Now, what are the containers? I should say this, who are the containers? Ultimately, human beings who are spirit-filled, children of God, are the containers of the Holy Spirit. So you have to find a container who has the Spirit, who has the healing anointing, and tap into that anointing. 
So they're all in containers. But there are three major containers all related to human beings, okay? How, how does this anointing get transferred? How do you get it from one person to another? How do you get that healing flowing into you? Well, how do disease... 